welcome everybody back to another episode of Steam vs. Machine. Of course, I'm your host with the most true Steam Machine, Steam. Normally, I would be joined by my father, the professional hand- handicapper, the lead marketer over there at Winners and Winers. But today, he said, man, you're such a party animal, we got a sticky in the zoo. So he's out there walking around the zoo being a party animal. That's right. S- Scott, the Steam Roller Steam, as everybody knows. So... Today, you will have just me, and because it is just me, and we don't have the professional handicapper and the professional ex-comedian, instead, you have a whatever engineer. So, I will try to keep it fairly short and sweet and to the point, but without further ado, let's get into it. Hey, if you guys tuned in last week, you guys would have seen each of our five picks. Again, hey, if you guys want to catch up on it, uh, you can guys check it out. Spotify, YouTube, it stays up there. You guys can go back and review these picks. Uh, I had my five picks. I had the 49ers minus nine and a half. That did not cash. And Scott also had that pick at 49ers minus nine and a half. Uh, 49ers lost 19 to 17 against the Cleveland Browns, of course, uh, missing a field goal there at the end to lose outright, outright losing. And I even had the over in that game. The over was 37 and a half. For those who listened last week during that, I asked a pointed question to Scott and I said, hey, what do you think about the over? It's over 37 and a half. He said, no, nah, I don't know. Just, and I thought there was value there. I bet the over 37 and a half, that field goal goes through, it cashes. It doesn't go through. It doesn't cash. So not only did I lose that bet, I lost a bet off the show. But 49ers minus nine and a half that did not cash for either of us. We both bet New Orleans Houston under 42 and a half. That cashed with the uh, Houston Texans winning 20 to 13 over the New Orleans Saints. I even had that on the money line. That was nice. Uh, I we both put, picked picks for the Carolina Miami game. I had the Carolina Miami over forty seven. Uh, Scott had the Dolphins minus fourteen. Well, good news. Dolphins won forty two twenty one. So we both cash on that. And then we both had the same pick of New New England Las Vegas under forty one and a half at minus one ten. That also is a W as the as the Raiders won twenty one seventeen. That obviously stayed under forty one and a half. And finally, my final pick was the Bills minus 14 and a half. Uh, they lost. They lost that game. Uh, they lost, sorry, that pick. I wish they would have lost that game. Uh, for those who tuned in, the game ended 14 to 9, but there was a pass at the end of regulation. Actually, they had a untimed down because there was a penalty on the last, on the last play of defensive pass interference, which it was. And then they threw a jump ball to Darren Waller again, and it was probably defensive pass interference again, but it was not called. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't matter anyways. I would have needed, I believe, Buffalo to have a pick six and then run it all the way back and then uh, get the two-point conversion uh, to still lose that bet by minus one and a half. So what I'm saying is that did not cash. Uh, Scott had the Cardinals plus seven against the Rams. They got up early, but sadly they faltered down the stretch. 26, the faltered down the stretch, sorry. 26 to nine, uh, losing that. Uh, so for those keeping track at home, me and Scott picked Two of the same picks, or sorry, three of the same picks. In those picks, we went two and one. And hell, we even picked a, a, the same game, but uh, not different ways. We, we picked the game differently, but not like against each other. But we won those two. So, so as we go along, still, the bets that me and Scott agree on, I think we're actually still doing pretty well, uh, two and one this week. And I think doing pretty well before. And so far, and I don't want to jinx us, I don't know what's coming up, but... I know that we, I don't think, have had any picks that have directly conflicted. So that's been kind of nice because it means that everybody gets to eat, as they say. So what does that uh, bring us to for the season totals? For the week, uh, I won 300 units. I lost 218 units. That makes me positive, plus 282. Or sorry, plus 82 uh, brings me 3-2 and two for the week. Overall, that, I was at plus 582. You add the 82 onto that, you get 664. My math's correct. I don't have Scott here to check me, but that is correct. Uh, and the win loss, uh, sixteen to nine overall for this for the season record, still pretty good. Plus six units or six and a half units. I can't complain. Listen, the hardest part about uh, a lot of this betting is, is betting within your means and not getting greedy. And listen, over six weeks, uh, averaging uh, a unit and point one one point one units per week, I'll take it. 
I'll take winning eleven dollars every week if you're betting ten dollar units. I think that's fine. I nothing to complain about. Uh, Scott had uh, he won three hundred. He lost two eighteen, just like I did. He was plus uh, eighty two. He was three and two for the week. Brings his he, going into this week. He was minus five hundred five. He adds the eighty two. It brings him to a season, or he was mi- minus five hundred five. I didn't want to make sure I didn't say plus. Brings him to a season total of minus four twenty three. He's chipping away. That's the only way. Sometimes yeah, everybody wants to get it back all at once, but no. Today he's chipping away. Uh, it brings him to a season total of eleven and fourteen. So again, without further ado, we'll keep it moving. Uh, I'll go first because my because I won. I'm still I have honors even though me and Scott exactly tied. I still have honors, so I'll go first here. Uh, we'll start it off here. I Cleveland Indianapolis under forty one. Uh, you can find this uh, under forty one at minus one ten. You can find this at points bet MGM and Caesars. Listen. This is a great Cleveland defense. It's probably the best defense in the league, as you found out against the 49ers, and they even contain that explosive offense. I'd be interested to see if the Browns are going to play the Dolphins. I think it'd be fun to see that incredible defense against that incredible offense. But, uh, alas, they are not playing the Miami offense this week. They're playing the Indianapolis Colts offense. And that is an offense that struggles, especially with the loss of Anthony Richardson for, instead, Gardner Minshew. And the Cleveland offense uh, isn't that much better, especially as we still see Deshaun Watson out. You know, that game wasn't all fireworks last week between the Niners and the Browns, 19-17. And I expect, honestly, a probably a similar score. Uh, I, I honestly, I wish, I feel like the vibe would fit in the dog pound more. It feels like this shouldn't be an inside game. This should be a nasty, cold game in Cleveland uh, kind of vibe. Uh, but I, I still like the under 41. I I think these teams are both going to struggle to get on the board, especially that Cleveland defense. Scott, for his first pick, he had the Bucks minus two and a half against Atlanta. I believe Baker Mayfield is playing, and this Atlanta team is struggling. Um, I can't, I can't blame him for this, especially if you can get him at just a field goal. Uh, anything can happen in the NFC South. It is in Atlanta, which, oh right, sorry, no, it is in Tampa Bay. Uh, if it was at Atlanta, I think I'd still like the Bucks minus two and a half. The Bucks are just playing better football right now, and sometimes that's what it comes down to, uh, especially in these division matchups. But especially with Baker healthy, uh, and Baker is simply just better than Desmond Ritter. And I guess I'd say Todd Bowles is probably better than Arthur Smith, and sometimes you pick, especially in division things, this is normally a playoff thing where you pick coach and quarterback, but honestly, if it came down to division, I think I'd also pick coach and quarterback. So, yeah, give me the Bucks minus 2.5. I think that's fine. Or give Scott the Bucks minus 2.5. I think that's a good pick. Uh, my second pick, I'm taking the Bills minus 7.5. They're at New England. You can find this on all the sides except for DraftKings. DraftKings, uh, I believe, still has it at minus 8. Or I say, I, Actually, they have it at minus 7.5, but it's at minus 112. This one, we're getting at minus 110. Listen, this is a New England uh, team that's bad. It's struggling. It's looking like this will be Bill Belichick's year. They can't figure out who's playing quarterback. Mac Jones, when he plays, allegedly, he's supposed to be on a short leash, and his leash... Still feeling pretty long, uh, considering the way he played last week and they kept him in. Uh, I I would be willing to take a look at Bailey Zappi or Malik Cunningham. I don't I I, I guess Bailey Zappi's been out, so Malik Cunningham's been that backup. Uh, what I'm trying to say is not a lot of good things to like about New England, even though this Bills team did struggle with the New York Giants last week. I think that's a little bit of a wake up call. I expect them to win by about 14 probably 10 at least here. Uh, I imagine they get up early and they cruise. So, yeah, give me the Bills minus 7.5 at the New England Patriots. And I believe – oh, it'll come up later. But the Lions, uh, Scott's second pick is the Lions money line plus 140. This is, They're at Baltimore, and this is a pick that I'm also trailing. Um, I just believe – it's not It's not going to be on the show. It's, I'm trailing off the show. Sorry, just to clarify. Uh, I think this Lions team is absolutely better than this Baltimore team. This Baltimore team has – Still really no real offensive weapons outside of Lamar Jackson. And we saw that last week as they should have pulled off uh, the win, but the players continued to drop the ball. Listen, so Odell Beckham Jr., or kind of the ghost of Odell Beckham Jr. right now, it's Rashad Bateman. It's Zay Flowers has been a bit of a bright spot. There's no running game. Justice Hill, uh, you know, listen, it wasn't supposed to be Justice Hill. So it was supposed to be J.K. Dobbins. And Gus Edwards is also fine. Uh, just not enough help for Lamar there. I do like this Lions money line plus 140. This team is looking good. There has a lot of people asking the question, are the Lions the best team in the NFC? If not, listen, they beat the 
They beat the other team in the AFC. There's only two teams in the AFC that are five and one, and the Lions beat one of them. I'm just saying, there's a there's something to consider about the Lions maybe having a claim at being uh, at least a top three team, at top, least top five team in the NFL, if not a claim for the top. So give me the Lions money line plus 140. I believe this is in Detroit. I think the Lions would be favored by four and a half. So it's weird uh, that it's in that it's at Baltimore. I believe the Ravens are favored by two and a half, and I think that's just uh, just feels a little ridiculous, doesn't it, folks? Sorry, let me double check. I want to double check. I don't want to speak uh, out of out of out of line here, out of turn. Uh, it is the Ravens minus three. Yeah, that just feels that feels gross. That feels wrong, uh, and I will absolutely exploit that every day of the week. And so I s- support Scott exploiting that. Uh, my third pick, however, will be the Pittsburgh uh, Los Angeles Rams under forty four at minus one ten. You can find this on all the sites except for FanDuel. Listen. It's two bad offenses. We tell this story plenty of times. It's it's and it's two pretty, I guess, solid defenses. We'll call them. The Rams aren't what they used to be when Aaron Donald was more of a game wrecker, but I don't think it matters. I think uh, this Pittsburgh offense is not great with Najee Harris kind of sputtering. George uh, George Pickens has been the lone bright spot. Kenny Pickett though is kind of sputtering. He's not – I'm not ready to call it a regression, but I don't think he's looking better by any means. He's looked about as he did last year, which really sucks because it was a, a person that a lot of people were picking to take a big step forward. Uh, as for this Rams offense, uh, Kyron Williams is out. That makes me uh, a little I, – I don't – it's one of those – if Kyron Williams is healthy, maybe I'd feel better about the under because they'd be more inclined to run the ball. My only worry is about uh, the Rams – turning this game into a shootout with Puka, Puka Nakua and, uh, oh my gosh, Cooper Cup there on the outsides catching a lot of balls. That does concern me, but still, I like that both these teams are what I would consider not in the top upper echelon of, of anything uh, in their respective conferences, and I expect them both to kind of be disappointing. So, yeah, give me Pittsburgh uh, Los Angeles Rams under 44 at minus 110. Again, all but FanDuel. Scott? has his third pick, and this is where I thought we were going to line up, uh, but it was my second pick. It's Scott's third pick. He has the Bills minus 7.5 at minus 110 at New England. Uh, again, you can find that all but DraftKings. Listen, I already said enough. Bills team's just simply better than the Patriots team, and I expect it by a lot. My fourth pick, Miami, Philadelphia, over 51, minus 110. This has been a smash, two smash-mouth offenses. Jalen Hurts has not looked as good as he has. But I think it's a lot like the Chiefs offense where you're kind of waiting for everybody to round into form. And this Miami offense, we, we say it every week when we bet that I feel like I'm betting the Miami over every week. But it's kind of paid off for me a lot. Uh, the Philadelphia defense has been good, but not great, which just seems odd. But they did lose a lot of pieces, but they did upgrade on the D-line. But... Luckily, the running it really isn't the strength of the Miami offense. Although Raheem Raheem Mostert, I believe, does is in the top three of touchdown scores, if not the top one touchdown scorer outside of quarterbacks, of course, uh, going into Week Seven. But I, but I, I'm pretty sure I saw that. I just I don't want to speak out of turn again. But uh, Miami Philly over 51. Listen, I think it's two offenses that can easily put up 30. I think this will hit 60, if not 70. Uh, unless we see a lot of turnovers, unless they're getting pressure on Tua, that's where the revamped defensive line does come in, does come into effect. They could put pressure on Tua, cause cause him to sail a couple throws, but then Tua throws pick sixes, and that's helpful. So at least when he throws interceptions, they're really bad ones. Uh, so yeah, give me uh, Miami Philly over fifty one at minus one ten. You can find that over on points bet. Number four for Scott will be the Rams minus three at minus one ten. Wait, what? Rams minus three, minus one ten. They are at Pittsburgh no sorry they're playing Pittsburgh in Los Angeles sorry I I put Rams if for everybody who's watching on YouTube I put Rams minus three at Los Angeles Rams and I went uh hmm okay but yes no the Rams are playing the Pittsburgh Steelers uh in LA I already said it uh, kind of even when I was talking about the under listen I really don't believe in this Pittsburgh team and I believe in this Rams team more than that. If I'm worried about who's going to crash my under, I'm not worried about Pittsburgh crashing my under. I'm worried about the Los Angeles Rams uh, crashing my under. So absolutely, I will support Rams minus three at minus 110. Again, in LA against Pittsburgh, you can find this bet, FanDuel, points bet, and Caesars. And finally, 
49 is my six and a half minus 110 is my is my final one they are at minnesota this is on DraftKings, and i want to say nope never mind sorry uh <laughs> ignore ignore that on youtube uh 49 is my six and a half minus 110 uh this is actually a line that was minus seven uh on the open and it's moved and it's still minus seven at a couple spots uh mgm for one is where it is uh minus seven excuse me if you can hear the banging upstairs uh but they are playing the minnesota vikings Listen, this is a Minnesota team that is sputtering. It's hurting, especially with their top wideout on the IR. And I believe it's a 49ers team that as long as Christian McCaffrey plays, they'll be looking for blood. And I think – I just – I don't see how I – don't, I don't see how it's not going to be a blowout. You know, the question is, can this 49ers offense still get it done with Devo Samuel out? And the questions about Christian McCaffrey, my answer is yes. I still do think they should be able to get that done, especially against a bad Minnesota defense. And again, a Minnesota offense that is severely struggling to stay healthy and relevant. I wish I – w- I was cheering for Minnesota. I thought Minnesota was going to have a great year, but it seems they are following the curse of one score of winning all their one-score games and now losing all those one-score games. And I believe this could still be a one-score game, but I believe that one score will be seven. So give me the 49ers my six and a half. For Scott's final pick, he has the Chargers plus five and a half against Kansas City. It's it's tough because I think everybody's still waiting for the Chiefs to explode. And at any point, they could do that. They're going to have that game where they look like the Chiefs again. And that concerns me for this. But at the same time, every time the Chiefs and the Chargers play, if you're a Kansas City fan and listen, anybody listening to the show, it's probably from Kansas City or around there. I know that you guys are all you know closely related or it's a lot of friends. So you guys know that this Chargers-Chiefs rivalry, especially in Arrowhead, has been decided by three points, I think, the last three or four times. So I absolutely uh, support Scott here. I, I and, and my system even supports Scott. I think I Chiefs favored by two points. So it's it's exactly – yeah, I have Chiefs favored by one and a, 1.9 points. So, yeah, this is exactly where I think it should be. I imagine it's going to be, uh, I want to say a high-scoring affair, but it could be, yeah, I, I think it'll still, well, ha, hmm. I'm expecting, like, so the Chiefs defense has been incredible, right? They've been really good. I 2017, which is crazy. That's a crazy low score, but this Chiefs defense hasn't allowed over 20 points yet, knock on wood, and this Chiefs offense just hasn't been clicking like it has at times. So give me Chiefs 20. Chargers 17, Chargers plus five and a half. Uh, you can find that uh, on all the sports books at Chargers five, plus five and a half at minus 110. And that'll do it. So, my five picks Cleveland, Cleveland, Indianapolis under 41 at minus 110. Bills minus, Bills minus seven and a half at minus 110. Pittsburgh, Los Angeles Rams under 44. Miami, Philadelphia over 51. And the 49ers minus six and a half at the Minnesota Vikings. Scott's picks, he had the Bucks minus two and a half. That's at home against the Atlanta Falcons. He had the Lions money line that's on the road at Baltimore. Uh, the money, money line, by the way, is plus 140. Bills minus seven and a half at minus 110. That's at New England. Rams minus three, uh, minus 110. That's at home against Pittsburgh. And the Chargers plus five and a half at Kansas City. That'll be at minus 110. You can find that on all sports books. So there you go. That is it. We appreciate you guys for being here, uh, you know, we wanted to still be able to put this out for you, even though it's just me this week. Scott uh, sends his regards. He sends his regrets. He will be here next week. He will be back in time uh, to, you know, hopefully recap another winning week. It's been going it, – it, those who have tuned in the show lately, it's been going pretty good for uh, for me, at least. And Scott has uh, – he's, he's coming along. He's right there with me. He's, you know, I believe as the show, we've gone six and four, you know, and I was like five and oh, and he was one and four. And then I was – four and one and he was uh two and three but we've gone six and four i think the last three or four weeks so for those who have been tuning in the show six and four is profitable six and four is profiting about a unit a unit and a half so you know that's that's what we shoot for we shoot for profitability you can't get we you know we'd all love to go five and oh every pick but listen vegas is really good at what they do so we can never promise perfect 5-0. and We can't even promise being positive every week. But what we can promise is we will be here doing statistical analysis, having reason behind our picks, uh, me having my system, Scott being the uh, handicapper that he has been for all these years, 
doing that and uh, doing his research like he has. That's what we promise here. We don't promise winners, but we promise that everything is backed up. And it's been six and four the last three weeks, at least, if not four weeks. So it's working. We appreciate everybody for being here. We appreciate you for hanging out. Again, I've been Truman the Steen, Machine Steen. That's been, uh, it would have been Scott the Steen Roller. Uh, you follow us Twitter, at Steen Machine, at Steen Roller. Um, uh, worst comes to worst, if we ever don't post a video, we'll probably try to put something up on Twitter or, you know, like week two, I think we ran into something, so we just didn't post it. But either way, we appreciate you guys for being here. We'll see you next week. Bye.